Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Kathleen and I am taking you on my journey towards becoming a registered psychologist in Australia. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel to see how this all plays out. In about 10 months time, I have to take the national psychology exam in order to become a registered psychologist. And I thought it would be fun to make like a little mini series about what it's like, the study process, what to do, what not to do. Um, in case it's helpful if you have to go through this ordeal yourself. So in this little video, which I'm going to call part one, I'm going to break down what the National Psychology Exam actually is. Then I'll briefly run you through my study plan and I'll actually show you what my setup looks like on Notion. And finally, I'm going to give you an idea of what my study system looks like to give you some inspiration. So let's get into it. Remember, you can skip ahead if you need to. And as always, I really hope that this content is helpful. As we all know, there are so many different pathways to become a psychologist in Australia. Just so many different options, it's wonderful. So basically the National Psychology Exam was introduced to ensure that practitioners were all performing at a consistently high level when they obtained their registration. The exam applies to people doing the five plus one pathway or the four plus two pathway, so I fall into this category. People who haven't practiced as a psychologist in over 10 years and want to go back to practicing, or for people qualified over who want to start practicing as a psychologist in Australia. And it's worth noting that people who are doing an endorsement pathway, so like maybe a clinical master's or studying to become an organizational psychologist, they won't have to sit this exam because the pathway that they're taking requires more study. If we focus on the exam itself, it's made up of 150 multiple choice questions and a person will have three and a half hours to complete them. The content of the exam is supposed to be made up of the applied practical knowledge that you'll learn Learn during your fifth and sixth year of training. And this is in four broad areas, so ethics, assessment, intervention, and communication. <laughs> to sit the exam, it costs $450 and you have to obtain 70% in order to pass. And if you fail the first time round, it is okay. You do have the option to resit the exam. And I think that you have up to three chances to complete it. Finally, the Board of Psychology recommends that you sit the exam when you were five and a half years through your practical training. So as an example, if you were doing the five plus one pathway, you would look at taking the exam halfway through that one year working as a provisional psychologist. I am nearly up to my fifth year. So that means that I would need to look at taking the exam in October or November of this year, 2023. And while this sounds like it's a lot of time, it's actually not really. I have so much reading to do and I still need to grasp a lot of the concepts that I need to know very well. I've been slowly chipping away at it, but I've recently formulated a plan for how to be a little bit more efficient with my study and I want to share it with you. So let's get into that now. For my study plan, what I've done is I've picked out a few key resources. These include the textbook Preparing for the National Psychology Exam by Nadine Pelling and Louise Burton. Everyone will tell you to buy this book to prep for the exam and I completely agree. It is a lifesaver do it. <laughs> then I've also downloaded the Board of Psychology's curriculum list and because I am a student at the College of Professional Psychology or COP for short, I've also looked at their curriculum list as well. Then I've gone through all of the topics in the textbook and these two lists to put together my study plan. So basically, as you can see, my National Psychology Study Plan, I've put in the domain at the top and then I've put down a topic underneath. And as you can see under each topic, I've also got this little toggle. So in theory, this helps me go back and retest the things that I'm learning about. I can put questions in as well. And I just feel like hopefully this is gonna be what, what helps me get through this. As an example, to make this a little bit clearer, if we have a little look at the domain of assessment, I'm currently learning different testing tools and I'm also reading the DSM-5 Made Easy. So I've got little toggles and when I learn about a particular topic, I can then go in and put some of the things that stood up that I think I should know for the exam. And this means that I can go back and, and retest myself on this. Um, so I aim to test myself every couple of weeks on the thing that I've learned, because as we know, our, our memory is not very good. We need to keep retesting ourselves to keep it embedded. So, um, you know, yeah, I'm putting down different disorders as I go through and learn about them and then going back and retesting myself on them. At least that's the plan in theory. <laughs> And yes, the plan looks pretty good, or at least I think it does. 
but I want to reaffirm that I'm not as well put together as I might seem here because you can you can see that a lot of these toggles are empty and I've still got a long way to go in learning about these different concepts. So now would be a good idea for me to talk you through my actual plan for how I go about studying and how I hope to prepare for this exam. Let me talk you through my system. So systems are probably one of my favorite things. I love behaviorism. And when I set up a system, it does take me a little bit of time. For this one, I had to actually experiment with what time of the day was best for me to study for the exam. Originally, I tried after work, but I found that I just could not be bothered. I was so tired. So I finally found a way to get past this. Let me talk you through it. What I've started doing is coming into work about an hour or 45 minutes earlier than I normally would before I have to start for the day. And I will go and make myself a tea. Typically no one else is around, so it's very peaceful and quiet. And then I'll go into my office and I will sit down um, and just have some great concentration time. And during this time, I'll do a little bit of reading and I'll try and focus on doing some active recall. So looking at topics that I should already know and making sure that I'm remembering the things that I need to know for the exam. And I guess it's worth noting, if you wanna get really nerdy about my study system, I've based it off of the Eisenhower Matrix matrix of productivity. Basically there's four quadrants and you should be focusing on the top two quadrants which are your important urgent tasks and your important non-urgent tasks. So for me right now, all of my assignments and my assessment that's due are my important urgent tasks that I'm trying to pump out. And basically this exam, while important, is definitely not urgent. I've still got 10 months to technically prepare for it. So rather than letting this massive thing get really overwhelming and chaotic towards the end of the time that I've got left, I'm slowly chipping away at it. I'm being very intentional with my time to help future Kathleen. So I recommend doing a similar thing if you have to do the national psychology exam or for any exam in general, make sure that you're carving out regular study hour every single day or every weekday to really focus on keeping up with the learning. So we are coming to the end of this video and I really want to emphasize again that I have really just started putting this system and study plan into place and I plan on giving you an update in probably the next next five or six months when I'm closer to that deadline so that I can share with you more pearls of wisdom as I come across them in the hopes that it helps you if you have to do the national psychology exam as well. All right, I hope this was useful. I'll definitely leave a lot of links down below to things that I found helpful. And I hope that you have an amazing week. All the best if you do have to study for the NPE. And yeah, I'm wishing you the very best. Okay, bye everyone.